Welcome to the Cinemarijuana Theater. Filmstain.com presents the shitlords of cinematic scrutiny. In the middle, we're, we're, we're in the conclusion. The third act. Act three of our witch triple cast. That's right. We're stirring the cauldron, so uh, fucking attach your dribble cups and sit down, and we'll fucking ladle you out a hot steaming bowl of cinematic gruel. Cinematic witch's brew. That's right. Buckle up, witches. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're here to talk about from 2015. Yes. The witch. For the Cinema Marijuana Theater, I'm Ed. I'm Kenzie. I'm John. All right. So the witch, the witch. Uh, yeah, you know, I was thinking since just really quick since we it was sort of uh, the release of the new Blair Witch film that sort of kind of spurned this. We on. decided to do this instead of going to see the new Blair Witch film because the trailer looks stupid. Yeah, and it doesn't look good. And well, and I saw it. So just real quick, I just I should jump in and just give like my two cents. I on can't that. believe we're gonna waste the witch's time. It's gonna be super <laughs> fast. I'm All just gonna right. say it's an episode. It's a Star Wars Episode Seven style soft reboot. Where even though it's a sequel that takes place after the original one, all the same stuff happens. But because everything in it, what is this? This is gonna help. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for th- make this take longer. This is great. Could you stop that? I was trying to make it spookier. It's not spooky. Uh, I, I, thought, I, thought, I wasn't going for spooky. I thought he put you in a cave. Yeah, it's, there's no, there's no, there's no caves. Like, can you put me in the woods? Can you have like crickets chirping or something? I guess that would sound more like it was boring. There we go. I'm out in the woods. Ah, the Blair Witch. I'm scary. Uh, anyways, yeah, the same shit happens, but because they use special effects and CGI, all of the good things we said about the first one, leaving things up to your imagination, all right, stop now. That goes away, and it's just crap, basically. Completely unnecessary. So there you go. There you that's go. the new okay, one. Okay, well, that's funny. Um, Actually, if Rollo were here, he would be like, I like this movie. Uh, he oh, well, thought it was worth seeing. Thank God he's not here. I, I, I'm bummed that I actually toasted, suggested we toast his health earlier. Now. We take that toast yeah. back. We gotta read. We gotta yeah, untoast. He it was worth how seeing, how so. dare he? Worth see? Oh, man, I, we got off to discuss. He's too nice him. sometimes. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, anyways, uh, so getting back to the point of this podcast, we thought rather than watch that, we'd watch a much superior witch movie. So uh, why don't you give us the synopsis, Kenzie, of uh, the 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 stylized V Vitch movie? All right, the double Vitch. The double Vitch. The witch is about this. Like, are they pilgrims? Yeah. Um. I. Th- yeah. I mean, basically, uh, they're, 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 they're Pur- they're Puritans. 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 Yeah, it's about this Puritan family who gets uh, ostracized and banished from their little Puritan community, so they have to go live in the middle of like fucking nowhere. By themselves on this farm, and um, not much of a farm though. Yeah, not much of a farm. They can't grow crops. Their fucking goats are like evil and stuff. And anyway, the movie is focused on Tom- Thomason. It's a weird name. Yeah, yeah. Thomason and basically Thomason's English muffins. <laughs> she she's out playing with her baby infant brother, and he goes missing. And it kind of creates turmoil within the family. And then um, she's involved in the disappearance of her brother. And then she's involved in, like, the slaughter of one of their goats and the destruction of their farm area. You're making it sound so exciting. Well, it is exciting. Because perhaps you might have, you might have, if you haven't seen the film, you might have read something about it. Nothing happened in it. And you might have heard some criticism, criticism, criticism of this film for being, shall we say, slow or boring or boring or 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 nothing happens. Right. A a common complaint for the original Blair Witch film that, like, nothing happens. Dude, a lot of stuff happens in this movie. I honestly don't get that complaint. And I'm sorry, really, if I'm making it sound boring, it's really not. No, you were making it sound action-packed. You weren't making it sound boring enough. That's what I'm (laughs) saying. Well, and yeah, and because I'm leaving out, like, the most important and exciting details, which is, like, how the older brother goes missing and what happens with her younger twin twin siblings. Spoiler alert there's a witch yeah yeah there's, there's a, a witch, witch in this movie that's what i heard some fucked up stuff happens to this girl and yeah. this whole time you're just like uh uh-huh, like stressed out because like what if this was like your situation yeah yeah i don't it, it, it's it's very similar um to the blair witch yes. in the sense of like the, anxiety the, the anxiety of nature 
the having to deal with being out in this area yeah. with nothing that that's almost scary enough before yeah. you bring in the supernatural element. All right. Well, why don't you give us some seeds and stems on yes. this film before we start yapping? So yeah, from uh, 2015, The Witch, directed by Robert Eggers. I love that last name, Eggers. I don't know. I always thought that was funny. Produced by Rodrigo Rodrigo Texiera. Texi, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Written by Robert Eggers, starring Anya Taylor Joy, Ralph Innocen, Katie Kate Dickey, Harvey Scrimshaw, Ellie Granger, Lucas Dawson. Music by Mark Corbin. Cinematography by Jaron uh, Blaschke. Edited by Luis Ford. Released uh, January 27th, 2015 for the Sundance Film Festival and February 19th, 2016 in the United States. Yes, and we actually we, we were going to podcast about this sooner, but didn't. So Yeah, I don't know why we ended up missing it. But we, we wanted to do a podcast right after we watched it in mm, theaters, but we just it didn't come together. I think we couldn't get everybody in the same place at the right. same time. Well, uh, why don't you give us a few minutes on that timer? Yeah, and we can talk about this movie. I just want to start things. I, I just want to get the ball rolling here by saying that if you didn't like this movie, that's fine. But this movie is superlative. This movie is, uh, and I haven't, I don't know what's going to be nominated for awards this year. Uh, and I'm sure I'm going to end up seeing a ton of the shit that gets nominated because that's what we'll do. Uh, but there's no way this isn't in the top 10. If they nominate 10 films for Best Picture for the Oscar, there's no way this isn't one of the top 10 films of to be released in 2016. Uh, so to its critics who assail it with uh, just horribly inaccurate criticisms, like it's boring and stuff, like uh-uh. it's 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 basically it's just out of your fucking league. It's I don't, suspenseful. Like, I don't just even, admit it. I don't even understand. It's like sometimes it's like I, that's how I felt. When we saw Batman v Superman. We see it. Yeah. We love it. I wake up the next day and it's getting torn to shreds. I'm like, yeah. wait, what? It's yeah. the same thing with that. Like, how can you say nothing happens in this movie? Like. I mean, literally everything's explained for you and they show you what happens. Like when the little brother disappears, they show you his fate. Yeah. When the older brother, you know, what happens to him, they essentially show you his fate. I mean, yeah. the the ending of the film, which I don't know if we get too spoilery, that's visually, I don't know what Incredible. I don't know what more Incredible. you want. I actually hated the ending. Oh boy, just like it's Blair another Witch. Blair Witch. Oh. Um, I think there's, I mean, there's, there's tons of payoffs. Everything with the goat, and I mean, every, there's always yeah. shit going on. There's not, I mean, you see the Literally witch, you see stuff every happening. Every member all the time. of the family dies except the main character. Yeah. And then, how can you sit there and say nothing happens? Right. Like, yeah. are you stupid? And like in horrible. How can yeah. you watch a movie where you have a crow pecking out a woman's titty and tell me that nothing happened? And yeah. and honestly, like I fucking hated the mom. It's not you're supposed to. First though, of all, stuff did happen. Second of all, you do develop a relationship with these characters. Yeah, like well, so okay. I mean, I mean, and, and I don't mean to say that this film is beyond criticism, because I would be willing to entertain uh, legitimate sounding criticisms of this film if there were any. Sure, mm-hmm. but it seems to me that the people on the plus uh, on the, in the pro side of this film uh just hail its virtues and its successes artistically while the people in the negative camp just seem to be repeating the same sort of complaints that speak more about the the person complaining than they do about the film because it's just that's just not well, the case. And I, I always wonder what people were expecting. Like, and I don't. Yeah. I don't want to call like the average movie going person like an idiot or anything. But I guess people were expecting more of some kind of a tradi- traditional slashery type of horror movie. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if they expected there was going to be like, like, I, like you know, monsters like t- tearing people up and, and there, well, there sexy were. teens fucking in the woods and getting their heads cut off but and there, stuff. But, but there like, was sexual well, tension. I, I know, though, I, I, too. But, there but, were, you know, but realistic sexual tension. I guess I don't. I maybe. Like well, I said, no, it was more realistic it, than well, anything. Right. I, I, mean, I just think this is a very realistic, very highbrow movie, and I think maybe people are were expecting a, a crappy horror movie, and that it was not. They, yeah, sure. They, they it didn't, wasn't crappy. They, enough. Right. Yeah. They, they wanted. They wanted some kind of popcorn grindhouse horror movie, yeah. and that's not what it was. And it was like, oh, this is like a good movie. I came here. For, I came here to like you know for crap. Well, and and beyond like what happens 
or doesn't happen in the film. For a, a, a guy that, it, for, from what I understand, is a first, first-time filmmaker, or at least first-time feature filmmaker, this film technically is incredible. The photography is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the music is 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 perfect. I mean, I mean, the music is just in- incredibly appropriate and and so well done. The acting is flawless. Oh yeah, it's so suspenseful. There's, I mean, I guess the, a lot of the dialogue was based on actual real it's diaries so and stuff. Steep, so yeah. in real, it right. feels like you're feels watching authentic. the fucking 17th century. It's the same kind of thing I said with the Revenant, where it feels like they sent a camera back in time on some level. Like you really feel like this is not. This authentic I think this succeeds story. in that department even more no, than the Revenant. I did. agree. I agree. Um, so from just just from its successes, uh, uh, in terms of its artistic execution. This film is 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 an incredible to behold, and the suspense is just wonderfully fucking orchestrated. Oh yeah, so suspenseful, so suspenseful. You know, I mean, I don't know. Just may, maybe it's not for folks with really short attention spans. I know, I'll, okay, yeah. I'll admit, I'll admit some of the things that might take people out of it. Some of the dialogue might be a little obtuse because it is really authentic sounding dialogue. So they speak in a. It's not exactly Shakespearean, but it's. A very it's harder to understand. Yeah, and th- there's very thick accents, and and uh, the language is very kind of the, there's the the language can be difficult to penetrate. At I time. do remember the first time seeing it, talking about false endings and how towards the end, like I felt like it did feel long because there were so many false endings. Well, but the, this yeah, time rewatching of... it, I didn't feel that way one bit. Right. Well, you know what's funny is like I could see there being false endings. But only if you were to expect it to end abruptly, right? Because the way it ends, I think, ties everything to great. And, and, oh, and, and, and I, I think it's wonderful. And I and I think there's many oh, there's many earlier it. parts. And I did I think I, and I kind of think I remember seeing it when we saw it in the theaters, feeling this where like you could see something happening and they just cutting to the credits. Yeah. yeah, like it just goes to black and then directed by. Yeah, and like it doesn't do that. I mean, you get a good ending and then it ends. But I could see you expecting, you know, because when a movie's starting to wind down and you know it's gonna be ending soon. Sometimes you start looking for that moment like, oh, right. they're going to cut it here. and Oh, they're going to cut it here. I feel like this movie, as soon as the mom died, it could have ended at any point with any of the events following yeah. that death. Yeah. So it's, I don't think it's a fault of the film. It's a fault of the human mind that like because you know that it's wrapping up, you can't help but sort of start mentally guessing well, that's yeah. a, well, it's a, when it's, it's going to actually end. It's yeah. like a, it's a journey and, and, you know, it has momentum. Right. And you if if. You naturally feel that momentum, and if if a story is being told, and you know you have that natural momentum going, and it totally like defies it, unless yeah. it's trying to, that might it might not be so great. It reminded me kind of the end of two thousand and one, how like there's a very solid kind of actiony story, and, not, and obviously not no, actiony, was, like, a, but it yeah. hits that point, like right, yeah, like right when the mom dies, and then like like it's almost like you could hear like that chorus of voice, like, sounds like the like Ligeti, the monolith, like the Lux Eterna. And, and right, and she, it's very this kind of somber thing where like she's almost like in shock, yeah. and, and and just the whole rest of the movie is very kind of quiet and yeah. somber, and it did really feel like the final scene of two thousand and one on some level, just in a, a similar tone of the way it yeah. sort of does this like almost quiet epilogue to the story. Uh, you know, I want to say to. Europe, uh, we might have talked about this. Europe produces the best child actors, um, but I think that because the the one the girl that plays Thomason is American, yeah. I think she might be Canadian. I guess. Yeah, because this was a, this is an American Canadian co production. Yeah. Okay, so she look her up, find out because 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 I, 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 I definitely not European. Right, right, but I I I, I don't know. I, I predict awards for this fucking thing. I, I mean, at least nominations for this. I it, can see critics her. Critics love it. They uh, uh, Rightfully so. It's I, just I, the masses that born, hate born it. In, uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, born in Miami, Florida. How no old shit. is she? How old is uh, she? She is... Da, 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 da. She is born... Uh, she's 20. Hmm. I can see an actress nod for her. Mm-hmm. And I can see a lot of noms for supporting. Well, no, no, not even that so much. Uh, I don't think it'll. I don't uh, really. I think if they award it any acting award, I think she'll get it. I mean, nominations. I think she'd be the one. But um, art direction, yeah. cinematography, cinematography for sure. Uh, 
uh, original screenplay yeah. because that dialogue and that yeah. even even the plot costumes points are basically even the, the the dialogue and even the plot points are mostly taken from real writing at the time it's it's almost i mean they really it's like that's what's got this historical accurate feel to it yeah because they really took people's diaries and stuff and and, and interpreted like the way from the things that people said about these types of things and 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 wove the story together from them that's you know awesome. it, it reminds me actually of whiplash from 2014 in that uh, okay so does damien chazelle at the time i had thought he was a first time feature filmmaker but i guess he had made one other and he had done the sh- at least the short of whiplash but whiplash was just such a perfectly executed film just on every level and by a, a dude who is really kind of not a veteran or too seasoned but it had everything going for it it had quality style you know what I mean? Story, atmosphere, just everything. Every it, it just it fired on every level, uh, both Whiplash and The Witch. And, and even though they're totally dissimilar in terms of content, I just think that they're both just so wonderfully executed and just such a just such flawless filmmaking. This better fucking pull some. Well, it, nomination, it, it was it was critically pissed. acclaimed, even yeah. though it seems like your average horror film, your average you, your average John Q. Popcorn didn't seem to like it. Uh, the critics loved it. Ninety one yeah. percent at Rotten yeah. Tomatoes. Nice, so, good. So it, it has at least received critical acclaim, which will hopefully be uh, echoed by the Academy and the Oscars. Well deserved <laughs> praise, Nugs. Uh, yeah, bring on the Nugs. Yeah, this film was uh, partially based on Edgar's childhood fascination with witches. And I guess he tried uh, a few times to pitch uh, films that were more, uh, more weird and obscure that weren't successful. Then he realized he would kind of have to tone it down and make a more conventional genre film. Um, it was mostly shot with available and natural light, which does help to add to the authenticity to it. This is a perfect autumn film, too. Oh, this is uh-huh. definitely perfect for like the month of October or it, even November. It's funny because, yeah, like, it, like obviously, like they look like pilgrims. I mean, it feels like it feels like Thanksgiving Halloween kind of rolled into one when you got like, like a pilgrim dealing with a witch. Yeah, it's great. Um, there were more scenes planned uh, to that were going to involve Black Phillip, but the goat wasn't that well trained, so they had to scrap him. Poor Fuck Phil. that goat, dude! I, Fuck that goat. Black Phil, huh? I guess the director said that uh, the goat was pretty hard to handle. Um, it it actually for, was like Satan. Yeah. <laughs> it might have actually been Satan himself. But I guess the horse and the rabbit, the horse, the horse and the and the uh, the crow were pretty easy. Oh, and, and the rabbit was actually the easiest one of all to use. Oh, the hair. good. I'm glad some of the, the animals gave him a the break. Goats the goats were a little bit unruly. Was stand there with its creepy eyes. Yeah, those eyes are fucking Way, way to make one of the most it. adorable creatures on the planet seem menacing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's, that's, that, if that's not wonderful Ew. filmmaking. I, I wonder if they had to have like a like an audition for for rabbits yeah. and they had to find the creepiest one ever. Like, not nah, too cute, too cute, too cute. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. That one's kind of spooky looking. Dude, just totally unrelated. You know what else is fucking rad? Just the fairy tale look of the scene where the fucking Jacob, right? Yeah, right. with yeah. the witch. Yes, when, when he, he gets to her woods. house, oh, like yeah. that scene from Conan. Mm-hmm. Right. But just the col- the red she comes out in yeah. and the colors, like the dark, like the blues and the grays and the forest behind and like that slow-mo. Well, even uh, when, she, even when she's so wearing it, it's like, a, it's like a Grimm's fairy tale come to life, you know? It's incredible. It really, yeah, it's, it's really... It's really what I want to watch it again right now. No, I know, and, and, and right him. now, and the scene too. And, and then it, she fucks him, and it's funny because it kind of well, she bites his face off at least. No, she doesn't. Um, no, she just pulled tugs on his hair because she likes it rough. She, you don't. No, you she don't. She hooks him up before she fucking fucks. You him don't up. see her. You know, because it notice when she bites into his face and he had those teeth marks on the side of his lips when he shows back up to his yeah. house. Uh, no, that was just because it got rough. No, nah, she was straight up feasting on him, man. Hansel yeah. and Gretel style. Like after he didn't even deed. get to get fattened up first. They, she just was, was chow it was down. It was, during the, it was during the post Man, that kid hole. is a good actor. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Especially, His little monologue at the yeah, end was when he's, pretty great. Like, when he starts getting like all biblical and shit, yeah. dude, it was crazy. I almost it stood up crazy. and applauded yeah. like here in the Cine Marijuana Theater. He, he, has, <laughs> he has this incredible fucking string of the most insane dialogue 
dialogue yeah. where he's having this crazy religious fit. And he nails it. That's and so it's, good. it's 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 amazing. So it's really, you know, yeah. honestly, dude, you could nominate that kid too. Yeah. yeah. E- we, even the little kid twins. Yeah. Yeah, those kids too. They're fucking so creepy. I and honestly so good. when I saw it the first time in theaters, I kept flip flopping back and forth between whether or not those fucking kids were actually children or like little people. Yeah. Because they seemed <laughs> it so was like the tin drum. Yeah. Right. It was it, it was, was really weird. hard to tell because like they seemed so kind of like mature and yeah. like and like unsettling that I'm like, no, wait a minute. Those are like those aren't actually kids, that right? That was the point because those the like devil dwarves. was in them by that well, right. point. And that's what I'm watching it again, right? It is you so notice. obvious. Because okay, when they start praying around the brother, yeah, he's saying Jesus stuff. Yeah, the dad and the mom and uh, Thomas are saying Jesus are stuff. The two twins are on the floor rolling around, freaking the fuck out. Yeah, they start blaming Thomson for it. Like, what? They're the ones who are fucking who cannot Being who are, weird. who are literally wincing in pain as soon as you guys start mentioning yeah. Jesus' name. Yeah. Like, it's funny. Like, if you watch it the first the first time I watched it, it's like, oh, like who's the witch and what's going on? But like watching the second time, man, you know it's the, you twins. Know it's the yeah. fucking twins. Yeah. You can fucking tell. Well, and then also the scene where where they're like, "Are you a witch?" and she's like are you and they're like does father think so yeah they don't answer her. right exactly like, okay. they, 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 you they, they little, little fucks yeah, yeah. <laughs> you little fucking bastards <laughs> Dude. Dude. that whole scene is really scary by the way oh, when yeah. they're locked in that barn right together. with like the goats yeah but it, you know what it, it's great too because there's a moment where there's a moment where it's like they almost it's like the twins almost kind of admit that there's been like this pretense. There's yeah. almost this moment of like realness between Thomason and the twins where when she asked them that. Yeah. yeah. Like it's almost like And it's an exception. You know. Yeah. yeah. It's so different because they're so they're they're like they're they're being so phony all the time. And and even though they don't they cop get, to anything but in that moment, still, it gets, right, it gets they, real they kind for of, a second. They're kind of like willing to... They let the facade drop a little slightly, bit. Just they're a little all bit. fucking yeah. acknowledging that Black Phillip is the fucking devil yeah. and that he's like with them. They basically come right and saying it. And that witches are like actually a thing. Yeah. And um, it's funny, we mentioned Haxon in the Blair Witch, uh, the, the earlier episode here, but uh, this movie too, like, I mean, some of the stuff... The scene, especially when the the little brother gets kidnapped, yeah, and you see his fate, like some of those shots, like you put those in black and white, they would look like they were taken, like fucking, like right out of like Haxon. Yeah. Oh, like, it for really, sure. It, it honestly feels like it, it, if witches were real, it feels pretty fucking authentic to what witches would be yeah. like. Yeah. Which um, you would assume they would be like. One thing too, before we get out of here, because we're over time now, oh. um, but you know, this movie was it's good. It's really good. Yeah. Um, Interestingly enough, deciding to do this triple feature this way, in a really bizarre way, the witch actually works as a prequel in a way to the Blair Witch Project. It, it, yeah, you can actually get sort of that. They feeling. both they both take place in Maryland. The Blair Witch Project is referencing this ancient, not ancient, but you know what I mean. This right. old timey, you know, witch witches, trial era witch like happened. witch. Yeah. Uh, so. Like, and then in The Witch, we find out that they're not just dealing with a witch, but they're dealing with Satan and a coven of a witches. Coven of witches. Like, at that end and, scene, and any one of those witches could, in theory, have been the Blair Witch back or, in those days. Yeah, or, yeah exactly. Whatever, or, I forget her real name, Eddie Kedward or whatever uh, Ellie was. something yeah. or other. Uh, or it been or like her. in The Blair Witch, those three kids and whoever goes out there, they're dealing with the whole coven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not been, just right. The Blair Witch, but... It she was be, one of them, and, and they're they're, they're there. all there. That's there for us, right? A, a, so it it really kind of, I mean, other than the fact that it totally isn't, yeah, <laughs> right. But it still sort <laughs> if of you, works. If you it watch them like we did, right. it, it 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 totally works. It almost feels like yeah, like if they had to yeah. put this movie out as like Blair Witch Three, the prequel, and just it would have been rad. And just change one of the characters' names to be like you change Thomason's name to like the like it. it it would be first off the coolest Blair Witch movie of all times, but it also would totally work. I take that back. It wouldn't have been rad. I don't think that 
if they had to made this Blair Witch three, that would have been rad. But no, it uh, but it have, does. But, but you're right. Right. It, it, it does. But it, yeah. it works in a weird way. For, yeah, and for our theme, what we were doing, watching three witch movies in a row, it definitely works. Well, and I actually want to point out that like when you told me the three movies, I was like, the witch too. Okay, that's a little weird. That's interesting. Well, I didn't I didn't think of it as such. The time it was just because I just picked up the Blu-ray and I was Seen itching to watch it anyway. It ended up working out really well. Yeah, we talked about doing just the double feature of watching Blair Witch one and two. But they're short. Right. And then why not? You know. Yeah. yeah. So, um, all right. Well, uh, before we get out of here, uh, what, what did you th- uh, rank these things uh, in order? Uh, well, obvi- uh, Okay. So we're obviously all putting. We're Blair obviously Witch all- first. You like Blair Witch best. Blair Witch second. And, of course, Book of Shadows yes. last. Uh, you know what's weird? If I'm going for personal choice, that's how I go. If I'm going, if I'm voting for quality, it would go I'll witch, never Blair vote for Witch, quality. Blair Witch too. <laughs> so personally, I agree with yeah. That, but then there's also obviously the witch. I think is critically the best one. For me, it's no contest. Uh, even though Blair Witch Project is amazing and still holds up better than ever, and we- well worth recommend recommendation. Uh, for me, hands down, it's the witch. Total total coup, every fucking level. Then Blair Witch one, then. Way some, down there, yeah, Blair someplace far, far in the distance yeah. in Book of Shadows, but, Blair uh, Witch 2. But Blair Witch Project, well worth, well worth checking out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So. And yeah, hey, now there's no better time than Halloween to watch yep. spooky movies. And so we, 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 we recommend maybe you should do this triple feature like we did and see what you think. And we have more spooky podcasts coming your way as, more, as more, well as more other rad stuff. Yeah, we got a month of horror coming for uh, October, so be ready for that. Filmstain.com. Uh, SoundCloud, follow us, like us, comment. The Cinemara wanted Theater at SoundCloud, at Filmstain, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, for the Cinemarijuana Theater, I'm Ed. I'm Kenzie. I'm John. And we'll be back with more Halloweeniness coming up soon. Stay tuned. Thanks Bye. for listening. Devil's wife, the old mad witch, she used to ride a broom. Now every night she leaves the earth and rides me to the moon. Ride